and welcome to worship on this 8th of August, 2021, as we mark the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Laura Sauter, and I am pleased to be leading worship with you this morning as we gather our four congregations together again this week. The congregations of St. Peter's in Zurich, Trinity in London, Trinity in Windsor, and here where I serve at St. Peter's in Broadhagen. This week, our guest preacher will be the Reverend Paul Gares, assistant to our national bishop. The musical offerings are from Trinity, London. Our reader is from Trinity, Windsor. And that ever important role of video editor is taken on by Pastor Nadine of St. Peter's in Zurich this week. It is a joy to be gathered with you in worship this morning, and as we begin, I'll invite you to join me in a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him and that strengthened by this food we may live as his body in the world through jesus christ our savior and lord amen the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus said to them i am the bread of life whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty then the people began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whomever, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I live on Treaty 1 land. I live on Treaty 1 territory, the land of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Metis Nation. I am grateful for the historic and ongoing stewardship of water, land, community, and spirituality offered by Indigenous leaders and elders. Many harms have happened, and much healing needs to happen. The ongoing research and announcements regarding unmarked graves at former residential schools means that this is a particularly significant time of grieving, trauma, reckoning with history, and soul searching. On June 1st, 2021, the ELCIC bishops issued a letter entitled, A Renewed Call to Reconciliation. I received these words as wise counsel and a calling. Acknowledging traditional territory is important to me. It is meaningful and prayerful and liturgical every time. It grounds me in my current place and context, helps me be mindful of how I got here, and amplifies my gratitude for the ones who helped me get here. My name is Paul Gares and my pronouns are he and him. I serve as assistant to the Bishop for Justice and Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations with the ELCIC National Office. I am grateful for all the members of the ELCIC who helped me live 
as a Christian, and I honor the gifts and witness you share with the world on a daily basis. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the people began to complain. In this story, the people who know Jesus best fail to recognize Jesus as the bread of life. The ones who complain are neighbors and friends who knew his family, watched him grow up, and lived in the same hometown. It seems to me that today, the ones most likely to claim to know Jesus best are those most connected to the church. The power I see in this text is that it highlights any temptations I may have to underestimate the gift of the bread of life. God's love is constant. God's desire to feed the hungry is eternal. God's people are diverse and abundant. The motivation for the complaining is open to interpretation. Perhaps Jesus is too familiar, but I miss a lot when I do not pay attention to God's activity in the ordinary and the everyday. Perhaps there is jealousy that someone is getting ahead, a bitter feeling of what makes you better than me. A lot of damage has been done in the name of trying to prevent someone else from becoming the person God calls them to be. Not everything in life is a competition, especially in matters of spirituality. Or perhaps it is fear. If Jesus is speaking truth, then I might have to change my ways. A new path can be scary, even one full of grace. Partaking in the bread of life begets a journey of discipleship and transformation. Perhaps complaining is a way of avoiding change or truth. As one response to the complaining, Jesus points to the story of God providing manna in the wilderness. God's people were in the wilderness as part of a journey of liberation from slavery to a new life in a promised land. In the daily collecting of manna, the community learned many lessons, lessons about utter reliance on God, the futility of hoarding, and the consequences of complaining. The journey to liberation is not always easy, but God is with us. In the course of a lifetime, most people experience some time in a metaphorical wilderness. Every person has a life story. Lessons about utter reliance on God are personal and sacred. It is a hard truth that some people have more and longer wilderness experiences than others do. It is also a hard truth that some people experience much more oppression than others do. The manna story reminds us that it is God's desire to liberate people and establish justice. Seeking justice and reconciliation are essential elements in the life of every disciple. Personally, I describe this as a calling to value persons, respect creation, and build community by seeking peace, justice, and dignity for all, and a calling to live with integrity, creativity, and a deep sense of the holy. In recent years, I have been growing more conscious of how much my own privilege influences how I perceive the world. The more I listen, the more I hear stories of how systemic racism and other forms of oppression continue to inflict harm in individuals, in communities, in societies, and in the church. I feel a deeper calling to self-awareness and a desire to create safe spaces for listening. At the same time, I have a growing sense of my own need to be transformed by God in order for God's mission of liberation to be fully achieved. Regularly, Jesus and I have frank discussions about whether I am part of the problem or part of the solution. Experiences that create meaningful transformation commonly include moments of discomfort, especially if I am hearing that my own actions have had a negative effect on other people. It requires commitment, hard work, and prayer to be present and engaged in the, mis in the midst of discomfort. I remember the first time I took anti-racism training. It was required training because I was serving as an ecumenical partner on an Anglican committee. I felt upset and indignant by one of the exercises. 
I began to complain. As we debriefed this in a small group, one person in my group, who is a black man and a priest, looked me in the eye and with abundant grace asked me, Paul, how often do you think about the color of your skin? Almost never, I had to admit. He replied, I think about it every day. It was for me a transformative moment that marked the beginning of a long and ongoing journey. His words continue to sustain me in multiple ways. In 2015, the ELCIC National Convention repudiated the doctrine of discovery. As a church, we confessed that this doctrine encourages patterns of domination and oppression that continue to afflict, afflict Indigenous peoples and the land today. And we committed to reflecting on history, seeking a deeper understanding of issues, upholding human rights, and working for reconciliation. On the last day of the 2015 convention, I asked a youth delegate, what was a convention highlight for you? She said, the resolution on the doctrine of discovery. We took that doctrine and flushed it down the toilet. If only it were that easy. The journey for reconciliation and healing requires commitment, listening, hard work, and prayer. This work is both urgent and long-term. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the people began to complain. But Jesus did not stop. He continued to feed, to heal, to teach, and to love. He continued all the way to the cross, where he himself said, I am thirsty. And to the resurrection, where he said, peace be with you feed my sheep, and follow me. We live with parallel realities. On the one hand, God claims us, loves us, holds us, and honors us for who we are. We never need to doubt this. We spend our lives learning the depths of this truth. On the other hand, God desires a world without hunger and thirst. As long as there is hunger and thirst, there is more work to do. We spend our lives being transformed and working for transformation. Radically loved and affirmed. Radically called to transformation. Thanks be to God who gives us a faithful community so we never journey alone. Thanks be to God who gives us the bread of life in order to sustain us on the journeys of discipleship, transformation, and liberation. Thanks be to God who so loves the world.
angels said it to startled shepherds, Jesus said it to frightened followers, and now these words which come from heaven are shared with us to make us whole and make us one. Peace be with you, and also with you. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms. For mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel. For congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those, who call, for those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction. For exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys uncertain about the future, for those who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, especially those family members, friends, and members of our congregation, we name before you. Now, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, fill our congr congregations of St. Peter's Broadhagen, St. Peter's Zurich, Trinity London and Trinity Windsor with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions and open us to the needs of our neighbors. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving hope. Th through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Worship is over and our service begins. Let us go on our way rejoicing to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.